Hello everyone, today I wanted to talk about Gimsa stain. And the purpose of this stain is to locate blood pathogens. Basically how it works it is there's a combination of stains in the mixture and basically um, these dyes will stain different cellular components and they'll end up with a different color. So a red blood cell is going to look different than a variation of white blood cells and those will look different from platelets and those will look different from blood pathogens. So things like malaria or Lyme associated pathogens, those will show up a different color than red blood cells. This stain is relatively common, so what they'll do is they'll take your blood, pull it from your vein, send it to a laboratory, and they'll, they'll run it through the stain for anywhere between 10 and 45 minutes depending, depending on that particular protocol, um, and then look at it under a microscope. Okay, and they have technicians and their job is to look through and scan through several flies of blood looking for something that doesn't appear normal, to find the oddities. In the case of Lyme associated disease, these oddities are recognized as usually one of these three, Bartonella, Babesia, or Borrelia. Now that's not to say it won't pick up other things, it can and it will. Uh, so we've got other things like anaplasma, ehrlichia, rickettsia, and lots of other Lyme associated diseases, but the three common, uh, most looked for in this stain are Bartonella, Babesia, and Borrelia. So what we're going to look at in this video are three major components when looking at a Gimsa stain. And those components are first, color, followed by shape followed by location. And these three will help guide us to reading what's going on in the blood. Now, let's go ahead and look at this image here that I've got up. We've got a healthy white blood cell right in the middle with those, uh, those blue and purple colors there. So the nucleus is stained that red purple color and then the rest of the cell carries that blue shade. Notice that the red blood cells are showing up as far lighter than anything else on the screen, like the white blood cell. They're pinkish and far lighter in color, and also note the other small purple blue dots, those are going to be our platelets, and as we uh, continue to examine some of these slides, We'll focus on trying to pick those apart from pathogens. Well, here we go. Here's another slide of a healthy individual, and we can see our red blood cells. There's nothing showing up in them, and we've got our purple, dark blue spots of platelets um, hanging around in the plasma. Another slide relatively healthy. Notice again the platelets holding a darker shade than the red blood cells. So again, color is our differentiating factor when we're looking through a GIMSA stain. Now if we look at this image I've got pulled up here, it's a blood sample with Babesia in it. And if you look around, you'll see a bunch of these small purple dots inside of these red blood cells. These are Babesia. And now you're probably thinking, wait a second, these look really kind of similar to the platelets we were looking at earlier. And that brings us to our next two points, location and shape. Uh, let's talk about shape first. So as we're looking at these darker spots, uh, we need to look at how they're shaped. Um, do they have a defined edge about them? Platelets, for instance, they're, they're relatively fuzzy when we're looking at a Gimsa stain, but Babesia and other pathogens will show up with hard lines defining where their membrane is at. And so as we look at these, these circles 
um, they've got their nuclei, which are going to be those those dark spotted circles where most of their genetic material is being held, and then a defined membrane line, uh, which will be outlined with uh, a similar blue color. Um, just some of it can get quite light, but if you look, you can see a defined edge of where the end of the cell is. We are also looking at location here. So if we look at all of these spots where these Babesia are, they are inside of the red blood cells, which makes sense. They are intracellular pathogens, which means they develop inside of cells. In this case, red blood cells. I've added tick marks here so you can see some of the Babesia if it was difficult to locate before. I haven't filled in all the space. There's plenty of Babesia on the lower half of the slide, um, but as you can tell, this slide is littered with Babesia and is absolutely infested. Bringing up our three core elements again, first color. Is it darker than the red blood cells? Is it showing up as a blue-purple color? Second, location. Are they showing up inside of the cells they're supposed to be inside? This is Babesia, so in this case it's red blood cells where they are most likely to be found. But that doesn't mean they can't be found floating around in the plasma. They can, they're just most likely going to be found um, through most of their life cycle inside of red blood cells. And third, shape. Do they have a defined edge or are they fuzzy? If it's fuzzy, it's probably more likely to be a platelet. Platelets are fuzzy and consistent across the board, whereas a, a parasite is going to have a hard edge and also be relatively inconsistent with coloring throughout um, where the cell is and, and what it's looking like. Let's look at this image here for a minute. I wanted to point out a problem with reading platelets. Sometimes what will happen is during the staining they'll get washed out and for whatever reason maybe they don't have all of their components together they look more like a parasite than a platelet. Um, and so if we look at this image, I'm going to circle in red a platelet that looks a lot like a potential parasite. You'll notice it doesn't have the coloring as the other platelets that are circled in black. Um, and that can be a little bit tricky. So uh, you got to be aware that sometimes the colors and the shape don't always fit exactly textbook what you want it to look like. Um, and just experience and looking at as many of these as possible uh, helps to solidify what they actually look like and then identifying what these pathogens are. Let's look at two more images of potential Babesia. And if we look at this one, you can see uh, that these red blood cells um, look a little bit more bluish in color, but that what I've outlined here with the red tick mark um, is potentially a Babesia. Notice the darker coloring, the separated um, color differentiation between where its uh, membrane is inside of the red blood cell and also um, its color shading within that area, uh, noting um, where the uh, nucleuses are located and where the rest of its cytoplasm is. This one here, high potential to be another Babesia, but look at the coloring. It's much lighter than the previous image. Um, but again, we can see a hard outline of where the cell is located inside of the red blood cell, and also a separation of nucleic material versus the rest of the cytoplasm. So it's just it's good to be aware that when you're looking at images online or if they're your own, um, that they're not always going to look completely uniform to what's uh, what's on other people's slides or, or what's in the textbook based on 
which type of organism this is. Now there's many, many different types of Babesia, and not all of them have the same structural makeup, and so we'll get a slightly different stain variation. Um, and also, this is very dependent on how long the sample is stained for, and we'll get a little bit of color change um, depending on how long and uh, which organism it is. Now let's talk about Bartonella. So Bartonella, also an intracellular pathogen, um, is mostly located when we're looking at these stains. Uh, it's usually found on the outer membrane of red blood cells. And so if we look at this image, we can see that darker spot right on the outside of that upper centralized red blood cell. We'll go ahead and mark it with a tick mark here so you can see it better. There we go. Uh, that spot has a high potential to be Bartonella, another tick-associated, Lyme disease-associated pathogen. Uh, and so if we're looking at this mark, you can tell it's much smaller than the platelets, which again have a fuzzy edge, and though they're similar in color, uh, this potential Bartonella spot here has a hard edge. It's where it's supposed to be on the outside of a red blood cell, making what you can almost see as like a, a small indent on the cell there. It's pressing against it almost. Um, and it looks very much how a textbook Bartonella would show up as. Here's another image of a potential Bartonella. If we look at that red blood cell in the upper right hand corner, we can see again a darker spot. Looks much different than the other uh, purple spots, which we're going to call platelets. It's on the outside of a red blood cell where it's supposed to be, uh, as location would usually permit for a Bartonella. Its size and shape are about right. It's got a hard uh, outer, outer line defining where it's located. Um, and yeah, that's our, our last image for today. I didn't show any images with Borrelia in a GIMPS stain. Uh, typically those are seen in, in between cells. So you'll see that in the fluid space uh, are usually where they're most located. Sometimes connected on to um, other cells and, and they can range from a little bit shorter than a, a red blood cell to several red blood cells long depending on how old they are and how well they're growing in the sample. Um, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, let me know what you guys thought.